Ty can invest his final protection on the incoming ice beam. The opponent then switches out into the unshielded Reggie Steel. The close combat's locked. It's loaded. This Reggie's going to be straight in and straight out. Welcome back to the channel. This season, everyone is super hyped because Gallade got access to Psycho Cut, meaning it can generate energy at an alarming rate. It is now apparently the king of the fighting type glass cannons. However, Shadow Sneasler has something to say about that. A Pokemon we've already had access to, but no one's using. On the screen, you can see a comparison of the two Pokemon stat products. People think Gallade is attack heavy. Sneasler has an even higher attack stat, which of course means it is even more glassy and outputs even more damage. The other Pokemon that has rose in popularity this season is of course Feraligatr, and the reason for that is its access to Shadow Claw. Shadow Claw is arguably the best quick move in the game. I think it's a toss up between that and Counter. And Sneezer also has access to this, so you see where this is going. So let's real quick take a look at the pros and cons of each Pokemon, Gallade. You can see on the screen takes only 4 Psycho Cuts or 8 turns to the Leaf Blade, which is ridiculous. The Close Combat comes after 5, the equivalent of 10 turns. Again, so, so spammy. As said previously, Sneezer has access to a very good quick move. Shadow Claw does generate energy slightly slower, but does objectively more damage. Unfortunately, we don't get the same type of attack bonus, but again, you can see our cheapest move comes after only five quick moves, the equivalent of 10 turns, and that close combat comes after six. Without any further ado, let's take a look at Shadow Sneezer in action. On this channel, we preach good counting. So if you're wondering where I got their move counts from, it's a website called pokemoves.com. Check it out. And in game one, our featured battler today, Ty, the king of entertainment, picks up the dream lead, Jirachi, into Annihilate. The opponent say switches into Shadow Steelix, and we see our first look at Sneasler. Ty tanks the break in swipe, farms up, full sends the close combat, does the opponent respect the damage? Get that Steelix out of here! There's the first big boom of today's video. The opponent then sends out Skarmory, commits the Steel Wing farm down, and you can see Ty running a very spicy team. It's going to send out Fracture. Fracture goes straight for the Night Slash, fishing for the boost, the RNG gods say, Ty, not today, buddy. The opponent farms up a boatload of energy, Ty attempts to throw the Night Slash, forcing a Protect Shield, but the opponent makes a savage Night Slash catch, back onto Annihilate, but undeterred. Ty pivots back out into Jirachi, and he's going to go straight for the Doom Desire. Doom Desire forces the opponent's first Protect Shield. This is going to be an easy shield for Ty's. That confusion will be knocking out Annihilate. The opponent full sends the Shadow Ball. It's now all down to Skarmory to clean up. We see the instant no shield deployed. The opponent full sends the Brave Bird, but Jirachi on a sliver of HP hangs on. Fires off the Doom Desire, forcing the opponent's final Protect Shield. The opponent now have a free stage. Lowered defense, get resisted, Dragon Tail farm down, and Ty takes the dub. In the next battle, we see Jirachi into the silly electric fish. My god, do I hate Lantern. It is so annoying. It looks like the opponent attempted to throw on the CMP tie, but Ty says, no thanks trainer, takes the extra. We absorb the Thunderbolt pivot out into Fracture, drawing out Skeledurge. This isn't a good matchup for the opponent. Of course, they do have access to super effective disarming voice, but just look at this absurd Dragon Tail damage. Although in fairness, Fracture, a pure dragon type, is supposed to resist fire, and it certainly didn't look like it, as them incinerates were doing so much damage. Ty opts to let Fracture go down, sending out Sneasler, looking for the one shield, Shadow Claw farm all the way down, and Sneezer now has a very nice run and start back out. Comes Lantern, Ty continues to farm up, which means he's going to be forced to rest his final protect shield, as Shadow Sneezer cannot tank a hit for shit. Ty now going to unleash the x -Scissor. We see Ty go for an undercharge in case the opponent opts not to shield. However, they do shield, so Ty going to take the initiative, knocking out Lantern with the x -Scissor. The opponent's final Pokemon is an unshielded Tangrowth, and Shadow Sneasler is going to claim another victim. Get that Tangrowth off my screen, and that is going to be all she wrote. In the next battle, we've got a case of Deja Vu. Another silly electric fish in the lead. Ty farms up, banks the close combat, Pivots out into Fracture to catch the Surf where it is going to be resisted. Fracture actually tanked that reasonably well. The opponent continues to stay in, clearly having no good response. Ty throws the Night Slash on the CMP. Ty Night Slash forces a Protect Shield. This still isn't quite Surf range, however we might get Spark Farm down Fracture. Running out of HP, can Ty make another charge move? Oof, we do get Farm down. However, Ty can now send out Jirachi. Jirachi is going to be able to Confusion Farm down. And then we're going to have energy here, there and everywhere. Ty actually looks to snipe with Sneasler. 
getting even more energy. The opponent then sends out Venusaur. Holy trainer, that is not the switch you are looking for. We fire off the neutral X scissor, which lands for huge damage. Ty continuing to farm up. It looks like he's going for the one shield. Shadow Claw farm all the way down. What is in the back? The opponent's final Pokemon is Polyrath Ty going for a very risky X scissor bait. X scissor forces the opponent's final protect shield. We're now going to get to land the close combat. Is it enough to knock out? No, it's not. The opponent survives. On quite minimal HP and one confusion is going to be all she wrote. In the next battle, we see Rapidash in the lead. What a spicy pick. We see Ty throw one Shadow Claw, then transfer the Incinerate onto Fracture. The opponent banks a charge move and then send out Tentacruel. Ty fires off the Night Slash. The opponent invests that Protect Shield. Very questionable. Tentacruel, insanely thick. Usually, I wouldn't recommend shielding from full health. Ty lands the Dragon Claw. The opponent commits to the full... Poison Jab farm down. We now send out Jirachi. That confusion will be secure in the knockout. The opponent fire off the Acid Spray, which of course is going to be resisted. But unfortunately, our Jirachi is going to be switch locked against an Incinerate user with a double debuff defense. Tie switch timer pops up. We snipe with Sneeze though. The opponent's final Pokemon once again is Venusaur. And this is where you're going to see the advantage of running Sneezler over Gallade. Glade is completely walled as the Leaf Blade is going to be double resisted. The close combat is going to be single resisted. Whereas Sneezer has the ability to hit for neutral with the X Scissors or super effective if you opt to run Aerial Ace Tie. Fires off the BM close combat. The opponent invests that final protect shield. We still Shadow Claw farm down and take that game. In the next battle, we see Altira in the lead. Them Dragon Breaths were doing absurd damage. Ty pivots out into Jirachi, drawing out Trevenant. Things are not looking fantastic. Ty fires off the Doom Desire, forcing the opponent's first Protect Shield. The opponent throws on alignment. Although if this is a Shadow Ball, it's not going to matter. That confusion will not register. The opponent goes for the Seed Bomb. Trainer, what are you doing? This allows Ty to force both Protect Shields in the mid game. Ty going to send out Fracture. We are going to respect a potential Shadow Ball. The opponent this time learns that lesson. Full sends a Shadow Ball, but Fracture now has a running start. The opponent sends back out Alteria. They're not going to be in for a good time as we're very close to the Dragon Claw. Speaking of which, the opponent, despite playing like a potato in the mid game, make a very nice Dragon Claw catch back onto Lantern. We can see Ty's tapping, moving over towards Sneezler. Ty makes the catch. Back onto Sneezer saying anything the opponent can do, I can also do. Ty invests the Protect Shield on the incoming Surf. And that is a very good shield. You might be thinking it's strange. But we've got the Dragon Claw Bank. So all Ty needs to do is get this Alteria into Dragon Claw range. Which will do with the close combat. And Ty is going to pick up a beautiful end game dub. Dragon Claw going to be massive overkill. GG's and thanks for playing. Heading into the next battle. We lead Shadow Sneezler into Azumarill. Not fantastic by any means, although we probably can't switch out. And our only real response is Jirachi. Ty farms up, throws the X scissor, which of course is going to be resisted. But the opponent, petrified of our damage output, invests that protection. We then say switch into Jirachi, drawing out Skeledurge. Ty able to reach the neutral psychic, which will be landing for heavy damage. The opponent shows no respect. Near getting one shot, the opponent looks for the incinerate farm down, but Jirachi holds strong. Jirachi is a Skeledurge counter confirmed. You heard it here first. Back out comes Azumarill. We fire off the Doom Desire. The opponent is now all shields down. And from a rough spot, Ty is now looking in the driver's seat. Sneasler with a two to no shield advantage. Although we'll very quickly be giving up them protect shields on these Azumarill incoming charges. We shield up the first Ice Beam Ty. Also shields up the second. The opponent then switches out into the unshielded Reggie Steel. And Reggie Steel is going to be straight in and straight out. Close combat, secures the knockout, get that Reggie Steel out of here, back out, comes a zoom roll. Sneeze, they're going to fire off one further close combat despite being resisted, landing for absurd damage. We send out Fracture, get the double resisted, Dragon Tail farm down and take that game. Ty, get out of there, holy crap, this opponent running confusion and that single confusion did like 65% of our health, holy crap. Ty Say switches into Jirachi, drawing up Defense Deoxys. A pretty neutral matchup. Ty able to reach the second Doom Desire on what looks like to be a CMP Ty. Okay, it's not CMP. Where was the counter? I guess best case scenario, Ty's forced to protect shield in the mid game. Last second Ty, gonna shield in return, looking to flip switch. Ty able to reach the third Doom Desire. This will be knocking out. 
Ty has flipped switch, and my god, do we need it. The opponent then sends out the Kentucky Fried Chicken. Bird of death, the opponent makes a nice X is a catch. Back onto Gallade, X is a forces the opponent's final protect shield. The opponent's at five confusions. It's four for the close combat, three for the leaf blade. Ty respects the close combat. The opponent baits with the leaf blade. Can we drag and tell farm down? Oh. Can we survive a leaf blade? No, we can't. And unfortunately, Ty is going to take a loss. Heading into the next battle. Sneasler into Gligar. Absolutely dreadful. Ty going to say switch into Jirachi. The opponent builds up to a potential dig. And we're going to see Ty invest an early protect shield. The opponent full sends the dig, then sends out Lantern. Psychic has been nerfed, although it is the correct move to throw in this matchup, despite Doom Desire being one of the best moves in the game. Of course, it is exclusive to Jirachi. You can, of course, run Dazzling Gleam for coverage, but Psychic does get the same type of attack bonus and has got a potential to lower the opponent's defense. Ty able to reach the next Psychic. Psychic forced to protect shield on the CMP Ty. Absolute best case scenario. Ty instantly no shields. Saying thank you very much for your contribution, Jirachi. The opponent goes to the full undercharge, wanting to get some energy, but Ty takes the initiative, sends back out Sneasler. The opponent sends out Annihilate instead of Gligar. I am Bamboozle. We fire off the X-Scissor, forcing the opponent's final protect shield. The opponent then catches the next X-Scissor back onto Gligar. That is resisted damage, but Gligar now already deep into the red. Ty still one protect shield, too high, but waits at his full clock. We send out Fracture. The opponent doesn't reach a charge move. Back out. Comes Annihilate. Ty farms up. Makes a savage catch for no reason whatsoever. Catching the Ice Punch. Back onto the low health Jirachi. The opponent now very much regretting that undercharge. Ty then farms up. Throws the No Bubble Night Stash. And we're going to take that game. Nicely done, buddy. In the next battle, we see the battle of the Shadow Poison type Sneezer. Of course, supposed to resist Poison Jab, but Sneezer quite literally doesn't resist anything. Ty farms up, catches the Poison Fang onto Jirachi, where it does absolutely nothing. The opponent answers our Jirachi say switch with the big thick boy, Shadow Snorlax. The opponent throws the Body Slam at very awkward timing, allowing us to sneak a free Confusion. Well, it wasn't quite free. I think we got free free turns. We fire off the Doom Desire. Doom Desire doesn't get the job done. Ty hasn't managed to flip switch, although once again, we have got residual energy banked on our sneezer. We send out Fracture, Fracture gets the farm down. The opponent then sends out Polyrath. We go straight for the Dragon Claw. Dragon Claw forces the opponent. First Protect Shield, Ty continuing to farm up, going for a very risky X is a bait. X is a forces the opponent. Final Protect Shield, Ty gonna shield in return. This most certainly will be the icy win, but Ty has two shields and we may as well start using them back out. Comes Nido Queen. Close combat is going to be resisted, but Shadow Sneezer doesn't care about typings. We managed to simul KO back out. Comes Fracture. Fracture running out of HP. The opponent makes a mistake, throwing a charge move. Wing con for the opponent would have been the farm down. They actually have power up punch, looking to vamp up their attack. But Fracture reads the Dragon Claw, and we're going to take that game. The tough leads continue with another Gligar. We say switch into Fracture. The opponent throws on alignment, giving us a free Dragon Tail tie. Going to shield up the incoming Aerial Ace. The opponent then save switches into Annihilate. Fracture with so much energy. Tie farms up to the double charge move. Dragon Claw is the correct move to throw. Both moves hit for neutral. However, Dragon Claw does do more damage due to the fact we get same type attack bonus. Tie fires off the Night Slash, forcing a Protect Shield. The opponent going to be forced to throw. We see the instant no shield deployed. Ty just happy to get some sort of advantage in the mid game. And in this case, it is shield advantage. Ty going to send out Sneezer. One Shadow Claw. Snipes Annihilate back out. Comes Gligar. Ty goes straight for the close combat. This is going to be resisted, but nothing's really resisted. When you've got an attack stat like Sneezer, get that Gligar off my screen. The opponent's final Pokemon is Polyrath and Jirachi is going to be feasting. So I'm going to shield up what's most certainly going to be an icy wind bait. To my surprise, the opponent plays the win con, full send in the scold. Ty gets the confusion farm down and that is going to be all she wrote. Huge shout out to my good friend Ty, the person I always call the king of entertainment. And it's easy to see why as his gameplay is so much fun to shout cast. If you're looking for a fun glass cannon, make sure you go hunt Shadow Sneasel. It is currently in fighting and poison grunts, and you can currently remove frustration as well, as we are in a Team Rocket takeover. This thing certainly proved its worth in today's video, even in matches where its moveset was resisted, like that Gligar in the final matchup. It just hits so fucking hard. It is ridiculous. 
And that is going to be it for today's video. So if you're enjoying the content, smash that like button if you're new. Consider subscribing. If you like your battles featured on my channel, a link to a battle submission form is down below. I'm definitely looking to shoutcast some Ultra League Premier Cups. If you've got a fun team, get them shoutcasts in. And I'd like to say thanks for watching. And I'll see you all in the next one.